oh, it was like new and butterflies. And I was like, other people really have to try this. This is really, this is like, this is fun. They, they have to give this a try. You're listening to Get Your Marriage On, the fun and spicy podcast, bringing you new tools and fresh ideas so that you can be the sexiest couple you know. Like most kids, I loved taking on new roles when I'd play with my friends and siblings. Whether it was cops and robbers, or playing ninjas, or race car drivers, there's a creative and playful element to trying on new roles and identities. As an adult in a romantic and committed relationship, you can bring that same creativity and playfulness in the bedroom through role play. Besides, many couples role play instinctively to one degree or another as a way to add healthy newness and creative fun to bedroom play. My wife and I have always been interested in what role play sex is like. So we've learned about it, tried it, it's awesome by the way, and fortunately have met John and Katie Runyon who are experts at role play sex. And I'm fortunate to have them on as a guest today that you get to hear from them. Whether you're new to the concept of role play or have lots of experience getting into character in your encounters, I'm sure you're going to love this episode. John and Katie, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Dan. So today we're going to talk about role play. And I want to know, I'm just curious, what was your first role play experience like? Well, I will tell that one. Um, John and I were watching television and we noticed a like an iconic pop star video had popped up and it was like she had on a classic schoolgirl short skirts and she was singing a song and he looked at me and he said how come you never dress up for me and I kind of had a lot of thoughts like maybe maybe you could do a few other things or and I do want to preface this that we had children that were one three and five so they were pretty young but I did think about it and I liked the idea of like dressing up for him that kind of um, made me excited. So I went ahead and went with it. He didn't know a thing. So I took the three kids and I went to Forever 21 and I bought a little skirt. I remember it was green and sage and um, kind of like a, almost more like a short kilt if you will. But anyways, I purchased this and I also would love to mention that with these kids that were being one, three, and five, um, I put all of me into them. Every bit of me, it was really safe. I could love them. They could love me back. And I definitely gave John my leftovers for sure. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of intention at that point in time. Um, and then John, he was really into his career. And I would think it would be fair to say that he I got his leftovers as well. So for us to um, kind of put a little bit more effort into it was maybe a little shocking. So I put those kids to bed. I um, altered my appearance. I put on that skirt. I matched it with uh, some brown knee-high boots I had. I put my long blonde hair and like low slung ponytails. I cut a shirt that I already owned and kind of made it, it was pretty sexy. And I, it was, it was sexy. And then John was um, coming home late in the evening, pretty much nighttime from a soccer game. And I greeted him at the door. And if you can imagine his face, he had no idea. And I said, Professor Jones, I've been waiting on you. And his face um, was so memorable. I remember that now. And his face was kind of like, and he was seamless. He's like, I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. <laughs> so <laughs> I loved that first look because to me, it felt like he looked at me like, oh, this is the fun Katie that I married, right? Like this is um, like, maybe she's back. Like, cause I put so much of myself into just being a mom or um, a a job at church or it just kind of let other things define me and somehow I didn't quite put the importance of being his wife high but we had a we had a great time and and having that look on his face is what kind of made me be like this this is great um, I'd like to continue to make some other scenarios what could we do about that was it hard spending the money on this skirt or how much did it cost it was $17. I still remember. And it was hard because I think at the time it would have been easier for me to take 
three of my kids to Target and have bought each of them a $5 toy, right? Like I, I think that that would have been um, my preference, but that experience spending the $17 on that skirt and us kind of reconnecting in that fashion was, was worth way more than $17. And um, I think that it was good for him to see some effort put into something that's important in any married life, some intimacy and good sexual experiences. That's good. Anything else to add to that, John? What was your, what was your take? Well, no, I was, I was surprised. So they, uh, it was great. So I, you know, my, my take on it is exactly what she said. So I think that when I came home and, and I could tell that she had, she'd gone out of her way to do things to, to, to make it exciting and fun that, uh, no, I was, I was into it. So I was like, no, this is, this is good. And, um, and then along with that, then that made me think, okay, if she can, if she can do this, then I can do that or whatever. And so, I don't know. We, so like you talk about the money, who cares? Like, I don't know about you, but for me, if it's going to end in a good night, I don't, that's like, I'm always best her, money hey, ever just, spent. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm always telling her like, Hey, if we're going out we're doing something and if it's for, it's for something like along those lines, man, don't even, don't think twice. Like that's, that's all good. That's never going to hear any complaints on my end from, from that. I think that's how probably most guys are like, if the money's being spent and you're in a good night. You're like, okay, we're good. So how does role play help you connect or what would you say role play is? Well, so I would say role play is, is just, it's just a way to get out of your routine. Right. So, um, and so that was, that was the first experience. It was just kind of, uh, organic or whatever that, that that's how it started. But then we had so much fun that night that we, you know, would start to be like, oh, let's, let's do that again. But it's, it's harder when you are, um, so we gotta have to go with the flow, right? Because um, we didn't, you know, we just have to say, like what she did. She she came up with it, and I just had to be like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing, I guess we're doing some role play here, whatever, and which was all good. But the the way I would describe it is just a way to get out of your routine, and I think the important part is like not to take yourself too seriously. Like it's it's just for fun, right? It's it's uh-huh. it's fun between you and your wife. Um, and who cares if you're being goofy or not being goofy? Um, it was just a lot of fun. And so I think also it allowed, for us at least, I, I don't know, maybe maybe other people are more open or whatever. But for us, I think it allowed, you know, maybe maybe some of your frustrations or or your wants or desires or whatever, maybe easier to to express them in in that format than then as opposed to like, hey, let's sit down and have a serious conversation about something. No, because some of that stuff bleeds through, right? So I, I think that uh, for us, role play has been useful in communication because even though it's in character, a lot of times it, it, it helps when you're not in character. Like it's like you learn, you, I think you learn stuff about yourself and about the other person. Um, because maybe you try things that you wouldn't normally try and you're like, oh, I didn't think I would like that or enjoy that, but I did, or, you know, those types of scenarios. Don't children instinctively role play as part of their play as kids? Right. I think that that, um, if you're as an adult, you don't really get that chance and what a great time and you're in a safe place with a relationship, but hopefully you have some good communication skills that you can, um, you know, have playful experience. Like, why isn't it fun to pretend that you're um, a maid cleaning a hotel room or, you know, just kind of these little scenarios that you can be playful with your spouse. For me, it really, I mentioned it before, but it really helped me kind of get out of mommy mode, like, and embrace me. And I feel like when I was younger, it kind of allowed me to embrace even my own sexuality and just kind of not feel like there was this pressure or something like I could just, I just felt more free for sure. Yeah. And freedom is so important as part of a quality sexual experience. Don't you think to have that, that freedom or whatever, there's a lot of misconceptions around role play though. What are some of the top misconceptions that you hear? Well, I would definitely say it's just between me 
and my spouse. It's just the two of us. Um, and what would be another one? Oh, yeah, because like sometimes if you talk about it, they think they think that you're, I don't know, role playing something else. Other but pretending to have an affair, for instance, perhaps. Yeah, or something along those lines. And just it's, that's not. That's not what or hooking up about. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Um, other misconceptions, I would say. Well, I think some people think, oh, it'd be too awkward. And I think what I would say to that is it's only as awkward as you make it. Like, it, like I said, if, if if you don't take yourself too seriously and you have fun with it, it's not awkward at all. It's fun. Um, so I, I think that's that's probably one misconception that's easily overcome by by just trying it. And because for us, it's always like the the end result has always been well worth whatever work or offer or whatever you want to call it. So I think that some people might feel like a misconception of the prep work that you might need to put in towards a role play scenario. Like I have to buy a costume or, or I need to like pretend a room in my home might be something different. And I always think that that prep work before you have a role play scenario is, is like foreplay. It, you know, it can really kind of get you excited or turn you on or maybe you're like setting up a a nice massage for your wife like you're giving um, her a service like I always love to think of of the prep work as like mental foreplay because your brain truly is your largest sex organ like if we can make um, just these routine getting ready and actually, it's not your routine because you're getting ready something totally different. One of our suggestions is always to have a new scent when you do role play, because even though that sounds kind of silly, it's something totally new. It brings newness, playfulness, novelty, all of these things. I love it. Love it. I just want to drill a little bit deeper on the it's so when I think of foreplay, it's like. I don't know. Let's do the 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 maid clean the hotel room scenario, like you just mentioned. You're pretending to have sex with someone that's not your spouse, and so some people have a really hard time wrapping their mind around it because it feels like you're pretending to have an affair. Right. What? Yeah. How do you help people th- think that through? Yeah, let me jump in there. So, <laughs> so I, I guess if you're not pretending to have sex with someone else. Uh, you're a character. They're a character, just like in a movie um so it's not it's not me john pretending to have sex with uh in this scenario you're talking about the maid in my hotel some stranger right uh-huh it's me whoever i am character um not pretending to having sex hopefully with the maid who is a different so uh sorry i might i talk with my hands um so so i think that's the difference it's not it's not a situation where you, you're fantasizing about yourself being with someone that's not yourself. It's the whole point is to be with your spouse and allow them to have kind of the freedom to be uh, out of their own mode and you to be out. So, so because you're both in character, I see it totally different than that, I guess. And I guess I, just, I, don't, I don't, it's not a thought process I have. I don't worry about that. And I would love to say that oftentimes you're kind of going to a little fantasy world, whether you're role-playing or not. And that could even be something as simple, like, oh, he must really think I'm like super attractive right now. Like he cannot, you know, keep his hands off of me and he has to kiss me standing up because we can't even make it to the, to a bed. Like that's just kind of in my head. I mean, I'm not having to say that out loud, but hopefully that's how he's feeling, but I don't really know that. So I feel like there's a lot of um, natural fantasy elements, whether you're role-playing or not. And we're just really expounding on that. And I think it's a fun and freeing way to express some of your sexuality and have a great time with your spouse while doing it. Cool. So let's say you really want to do a role-play, but your spouse will take some convincing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> What's a great way to, if you've never done this before and you want to experiment with it, any tips on like how you'd ask your spouse to role play with you? I do have one. I think that if I were going to go to John and suggest it, obviously I just kind of went for it. Um, 
I don't know that I would do that. I think I could have said to John, hey, I was looking up some really fun ideas to kind of keep it sexy and spicy in our marriage. And I came across the idea of role playing and it really excited me and I really want to try it. And I would, I would love to do that. What do you think? I think you have to declare your excitement and your desire to do it and then let them have a chance to think about it because maybe they haven't really thought about it before and you're like just you know get ready for bed and you throw and you spring it on them so give them a little bit of time to think about it but um I think that you could also go into the idea of like maybe a couple things of what it's not it's just you and me it's just really fun I love the idea of dressing up for you um kind of putting my mommy burner you know my mommy mode on the back burner that is how I would address it. Um, what would you have said? For me, I would, I would just say, why not? We, we do all kinds of other things to entertain ourselves. Um, you want to have a good sex life. So it's, it's fun to have fun in your sex life too, right? So I think if, it was, if my spouse was, uh, luckily I don't have that problem. If my Hesitant. Spouse, uh -huh. If my spouse was, was like, nah, I don't want to try that. Uh, I think I would probably try and go down the route of something where the role play was was geared more towards um, a service or a a something where she didn't have a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. she just got the enjoyment of it and could kind of relax. And so, and I think that we've done that on our own as we've done different role play scenarios um, where it's like, I, I maybe she's mad at me or something. Who knows? Right. <laughs> so then, if I want to do something, I'm going to go and and I'm going to put together a role play where maybe it's where there's really almost nothing that she has to do other than just enjoy enjoy the moment and and relax and so maybe that's easier to convince someone to try it when they don't have to put a lot of effort into it they can just sit back and and relax so i think there's there's that i think that i think that small gifts mean a lot sometimes because of the, the thought process as opposed to not because of a dollar value or anything like that, but if I can incorporate a small thoughtful gift into a, a role play, I think that that helps. Uh -huh. um, it helps. It helps one to make it more realistic and and more fun, but also just shows in the same way that she showed effort to to be dressed differently when I came home that night. It's an effort to to work a gift into. I know something she's won. Something I'm going to buy her anyway. Uh -huh. um, why not? Why not turn it into something that that helps, you know, in other ways? Very good, very good. How about getting into character? Like for non-actors, that could feel really awkward. Like any tips on that? Like I got to take on this role. I I'm not a great actor. I don't know that you have to feel like you need to be a great actor. I would love to say that it has just been like flawless, but a couple ideas that I, that we have is to have a drink in your hand. I don't care if it's water, champagne or anything, because one, it kind of gives you something to do with your hands. And two, you can take like a quick sip and have like a second or two to come up with an answer or something kind of witty to do. Um, that I like that. Uh -huh. And then uh, change your appearance up, get out of your regular routine. If uh, for like for me, I'll just give you maybe a quick thing that I would do for role play scenarios. Um, I would change up my hair, however that might be. Like um, I have a few wigs that I would use. I definitely wear a different perfume. I um, would try my makeup differently, but these are things that make me feel different and sexy. It doesn't have to be for everyone. And uh -huh. another thing I like to do is um, I'll just put on like a few fake tattoos kind of uh -huh. forever. Uh -huh. I personally don't have any and that is just kind of fun for like a peekaboo experience like oh what is that that is that is not no, um, in my normal routine so those things and as far as how I prepare myself to get into character the actual physically getting ready into it is is really important to me um but I just kind of try to like think of some new characteristics or like a new city I might be from. And he's not going to like grill me. If I say I'm from Charlotte, he's not going to be like, 
so what highways are what what route do you take to work like we're not trying to <laughs> which high school in charlotte do yeah, you go to yeah. <laughs> charlotte high but no <laughs> uh, so we also don't really we're like forgiving for each other so we're trying you know he's he's not going to ask some questions that would kind of stump me if you will so uh -huh. but we've had some really great experiences you he he does a good job of coming up with things or surprising me. So it's been really fun. I highly recommend it. Any other tips, John, to add on to that getting in character? Well, I usually use an excuse to buy myself new clothes if I want, you know, uh -huh. just clothes that she has never seen me in before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that helps, it helps yourself, but I think it also helps, helps them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, there's a newness there and it's a good excuse. Um, I will tell you a pair of fake glasses is, I don't know what it is. We throw on glasses and feel different. Uh -huh. Don't wear glasses, so that's uh, that's one that I like to do from an appearance standpoint. Um, so outside of the appearance, I would say the other thing you got to do is get your mind kind of in their mind, right? Uh -huh. and so that's uh, so that's where I kind of allow myself to to just like I wonder what it would I wonder what I'd be like as a whatever it was a doctor is it this or that and then use just think along those lines and i don't know just allow yourself to to say things you wouldn't normally say or do things you wouldn't normally do um not because they're good or bad or anything like that just because it's different than how you normally act and it just it's it, playful it, it it's it playful enhances the enhances the whole the whole mood i love how it's all about like trying on new identities and like hey. what would the world be like through this lens what would it be like to experience my spouse like this or this other way and so you get to live and experience life in new ways without like and still you know within within the you know the covenant of your marriage i think that's wonderful absolutely all right so i've heard you say the before the importance of confidence and compliments can you expound on that a little bit i'd be happy to so Confidence uh, really is something that kind of comes from within you. And I know that we all say you have that internal thing. And um, I say you need to pull from that. Go for it. You know what you have and what you what what makes you you and and special. But if if you're really struggling with that, I think that you can borrow from some external things. And what I mean by that is like, you've always heard like if you look good you feel good so you could try that like i know that i look pretty good in this dress and i'm pretty sure he's gonna like it that just makes me like stand up a little bit higher and um feel feel pretty confident but confidence is really sexy as well it is uh often said like confidence is the sexiest thing that you'll wear mm -hmm. and i truly believe i know that that is true um so confidence like I think that if I walked into a room and I had, let's just say um, a maid costume on mm -hmm. and I kind of was like meek coming in, or if I had that costume coming in the room, whether I'm meek or not, he's gonna think it's pretty hot. But if I'm kind of like, like working it a little bit and like shoulders and like- With the swagger. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah and I think that I look good too and feel good. He, he's gonna notice a difference and then, the compliment side is it's pretty vulnerable we talked about that a little bit like but i think with vulnerability you truly can build some intimacy and a way to make you feel not as vulnerable excuse me is um to give your spouse compliments like you're they're really putting themselves out there like wow you look really great in that or i can't believe you put this much effort into this this is so great um we really you cannot give too many compliments, especially when they're sincere, like make them. And then when you get them, you can just say, thank you. Like accept it. You don't have to be like, oh no, like, thank you. I'm glad you noticed. Yes, yes. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure, yes, let's keep working on that. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so with confidence, is it kind of like a fake it to make it kind of a thing? Or like sometimes do you, is part of acting confident and act if you don't really feel confident? Yes, you can borrow it for sure. Fake it okay. till you make it. All right, awesome.
So you've developed this amazing website called Faithful Fling. What gave you the inspiration to, to do that? So um, one day I was riding, I think I was on an airplane ride, and I was, I was making a list of all the things that I didn't like about the business I owned at the time um, and businesses that I, that I was in. So I made a list of all the things I didn't like. So then I was making a list of what would the perfect business be and and so i started making all all these different characteristics of the list and then i started to try and match our our skills and our talents to what would be on that list and so it came it came of an airplane ride and when i got down to it i decided okay i want to have this type of a business and then i had to plug something into that business and you know, they always say you should you should do something that you, you really love and it won't really be work and uh -huh. those types of things. And so like, well, I really, I really like having sex and <laughs> planning all these things with with my wife. So, you know, but how can I make that a business? Um, but we started playing around with the idea of like, OK, how, how could we do something that would be that would bring the same type of excitement to other people? Uh, and then we started to realize. We could probably actually do it really better for other people than we can do it for ourselves because when we're doing it for ourselves we have to um improvise or we have to do a lot a lot of work and there's no i don't know there's no it's hard to have surprises unless you just really kind of have to go with the flow and so when we when we decided to do faithful fling we said this is really great because we can we can design these flings and we will know both sides of the story and we can create uh, excitement and surprises. And if, if we separate that out where the guy only sees his part of the story and he knows a little bit about what's going to happen and the girl sees her part of the story and she knows her part, that there's still now it's now it's like like a first date almost. You just don't know. You don't know enough about this person. So it's exciting. To, to learn more about that character and and it gives you it gives you a a way to if let's say you're, you don't feel like you're a good actor you can change it however you want to change it because they don't know what you're supposed to do or not supposed to do so there's a lot of, of freedom inside of that but all of the ideas and in work is done for you and allows you and it puts you in situations that maybe you wouldn't put yourself in which Sometimes it could be a challenge or or a challenge is probably not the right word, but different. And you're like, oh, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought of that, but man, that was really fun. Or um, and I think that adds to it as well, just because it's different than what you're normally doing. And so so that was that was kind of the impetus for the whole idea. But we had we had young kids at the time, and we came very closely to launching the business, and we're like, we were very busy. I was I was changing careers. It was a lot of different things, and so we were like, "Oh, maybe now is not the right time." Um, and so then we we kind of put it on the back burner for a little bit, and then what uh, a year or so ago, Katie, is that right? Yeah, about a year or so ago, we're like, "No, we we got to do this. This is it's too much fun. It, there's there's too many people that would, would benefit from this and and would enjoy it the same as we do it." So so no. Yeah. Why not? I love it. So yeah. it's different that, yeah, I guess you can go buy a book on Amazon with role play snares in it. But what makes Faithful Fling different is you, there's still mystery because you don't know exactly what the surprises are going to be from your counterpart. Like, yeah. So we, we, and we've done some of those books before and, and they're fun. I, I think they're, they're a lot of fun, but it's totally different, right? When it's, um, when you I already like, know the end from the beginning, it kind of takes the, it's like watching a movie and you already know like how it's going to end. <laughs> a little bit of that for certain. And I think with ours, we, we set them up in a way we've been doing it long enough that we kind of know some, some fun things. And we take all that work that we've done, which is fun. And we've turned that into something for, for them to be able to expound on and to, to do, but it's the, the, the kind of twists and turns, really is what makes it a lot of fun uh, not not just from a from a sexual standpoint just from a just from fun right i think that one thing that might be different 
than role playing by yourself and with faithful playing is that you can guarantee yourself at least one fun date night a month that is going to provide you with a lot of opportunity to flirt and have some mental foreplay beforehand. So you're connecting that way. Um, and then you're going to, you're just, you're going to have a really fun time and it's going to be a unique experience because like John mentioned before, my role that I see, John does not get to see it all. So it leaves you a lot of freedom. Again, this word freedom to, um, expound on the role if you would like, or take a few things away that maybe that you didn't like, and he would have no idea. So we will even tell you within your fling description of exactly what he knows about your um, responsibilities. And then there's another portion that would be surprises for your spouse. And, and that is just a great way to, who doesn't like to surprise their spouse? And, and it couldn't, it's not just like, gifts. It could be an action. It could be a um, suggested dialogue. It could be, we have a few spicier options that we give. If you're maybe not, you don't know how to go about that. We give you some suggestions and ideas on how, how it could be different, or excuse me, how it can be different for you for this one um, night a month. And we do call these role play scenarios flings. Uh -huh. So that hence the faithful, because well, we're still married and it's just between us. And then it is um, a fling because I don't know, it's kind of fun to, to think about a fling. And I think that it is something that you'll surprise yourself with that you will remember. I and want to tell you my first experience doing a role play with a faithful fling. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, you sent me one in advance where my wife was to be a realtor and I was selling my home and she's a high power realtor top in our area. And she knows how to close deals. So she rings the doorbell and she totally dressed herself up very professionally and walks right in. And normally my wife is more on the quiet, very soft-spoken type, but she is very commanding in this, in this role play. So it's a very opposite from the way I usually experience my wife. And I got to say, it was so hot. <laughs> It was so exciting because uh, to be dominated, to be, I know, right. yeah, she's, she's more of the pursuer in this one. And just the little things she would say, like, we'd walk through the laundry room and she'd put her hand on the washing machine and say, how much does this vibrate when it's on? And like, like go in the garage and looks at the tools and says, do you use all of these tools? I bet you're really good at using tools. Like <laughs> there's little lines like that. My jaw is dropping. Like this usually doesn't come out of her mouth, but it was so much fun to that. We would, we had the whole house to ourselves. So I had, of course I had to show her every room and she had to test every bed and every couch and invite me to sit by her. And I won't, I'll edit out the rest, but you see how exciting, like this role play scenario could be for us. Any other scenarios that you have, like that, one could find if they were to sign up for Faithful Fling? We have a just, lot. Um, well, I'll sort of some samples, of just some setups. Eric, right, we have a um, car salesman. That is a good one. We'll say this every time. Oh, the maid, that's a good one. Like we'll keep saying, that's a good one because uh -huh. I love them all. Um, a massage. Mm -hmm. And we have a, one that I'm working on right now. It's called Wallmates. So what I mean by that is you have two people that are sharing an apartment and they have one wall that separates their living space. Uh -huh. So um, that's a pretty good one. So I guess I, I like to think of more, we have, there's a lot of them, right? So there are ones that we set up as the monthly flings that that if someone was a member of Faith Fling, they would, they would get that as in succession and they would get those. But then there's also flings that only make sense in a special occasion. And so, like a St. Patrick's Day one, for instance. Like a St. Patrick's uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. so, so those flings would never be set up in the monthly flings because they may just not make sense for that, but they may make perfect sense for someone who's about to take a beach vacation. We're not going to put a fling together that tries to get you on a monthly basis. So someone gets that in December and they live in Wisconsin and they're trying to plan a beach situation. That's not going to happen, right? So those types of scenarios, I'll call them geographic or time of time of year, seasons, holidays, those would be like special occasion flings that you can you can have that are gonna 
to tailor to a vacation or a special treat or something along those lines. Um, and then on the, what I'll call the monthly flings, those are, I guess, think of all the classic fantasies that, that probably 99.9% .9 of people don't um, ever experience in their life. Um, we give them a way to, to have those experiences in a really fun way without it, you know, without any of the, the, the negative side of it. And so, so I, I think that's the best way without kind of, and part of the, part of the fun, Dan, of Faithful, Faithful Fling is you don't know what that next monthly fling is. Uh -huh. You don't have any control over that. It's, it shows up and you're wondering what's it going to be. And, and man, this is going to be awesome. Or is it not going to be awesome? I don't know, but it's, it's going to be new. And that's awesome. part of, it is new. Awesome. But um, that is part of the fun. And it's also, I think, part of the, of the kind of liberating side of it where, hey, look, this is what the fling is for this month. So this, this is what I'm going to do. And <laughs> I would have never thought of doing this myself, but hey, this is what it is for this month. Let's, let's give it a run. And uh -huh. it, takes, it takes some of that. I think it takes some of the awkwardness away because you don't have to, it's not you that came up with this yeah. idea, this fling and your, your wife or your husband's like, man, it's kind of weird, you know, um, where, where'd, where'd you come up with this one? Um, that, that responsibility is taken out of that scenario. It's like, look, I'm, I'm just having fun. This is, this is the fling we're given this month. This is the, the, the script and I'm gonna have fun with it. So I think that that is a big difference. Um, one of the reasons that we decided to do Faithful Fling is that we realized it really helped us and it made us feel a little bit more connected. And in fact, during our first fling, I would say that we didn't really get along that well. During our first role play scenario, yeah, it was a I rougher say, time in our marriage. I would say that we weren't, but at that moment, we were like, oh, afterwards it was like, this is still playful. This is great. And um, we went for years kind of continuing to introduce role play scenarios into our marriage. And we had a great time. And he had the idea on the plane, like what happens if we decided to make this a business? And we love the idea of creating these role play scenarios for another couple to do together that can increase their intimacy and spice up their sex life and give them some passion. And then another thing I really love about it is it brings this newness um, almost like a first date again, like, who's he going to be? Who am I going to be? Um, cause I can remember a time when we were just in the kitchen, our kids were upstairs and we had just, I think we pretended we met each other at a bar or something. And I still remember that kiss that when he just kissed me in the kitchen that I am in multiple times a day. And it felt like, oh, it was like new and butterflies. And I was like, other people really have to try this. This is really, this is like, this is fun. They, they have to give this a try. <laughs> Love it. That's great. One of the things that I really like about it is, is that when, when she is in character, it's more fun. Like she is, she's more apt to be, um, it's a little more fun, like wild or crazy or sexier. It's, it's, and so it's good. So it's like things where, you know, we've been married for 20 plus years and I still get surprised. Right. And so that's awesome. As opposed to, you wouldn't think at 20 plus years to be a lot of surprises, but she surprises me all the time. Um, and so I think that's, that is an advantage of role play because it, it does, it allows you somehow some kind of freedom to, to do or say things that you wouldn't normally do. And on the, on the flip side of that is it's very much a turn on, I think. So, so I would say that's an important part of it. And one of the real benefits is that you, you'll find that there's, there's excitement there that maybe you just haven't had. Love it. That's so good. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Where can listeners find out more about Faithful Fling? They can visit us at faithfulfling.com. And we're also on Instagram at Faithful Fling. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.
We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Get Your Marriage On. And if you did, we would love it if you would take a few seconds to give us a rating on iTunes and to share the show with your friends. They'll thank you for life. Once you've done that, you can head over to GetYourMarriageOn.com for more resources about today's topic and to download our amazing marriage apps. Now go get your marriage on.